Now we're ready to add some drama to our design. We're going to go back to the File menu, Open, and we're going to select X-Wing, click on it, click Open, click and drag the tab down and over. Make sure that your Move tool is the active tool. Click on what you want to move, drag it to where you want it to be. And I'm just going to take a moment to center it up in this area so I can see all the edges. And then I'm going to select the Magic Wand tool and I'm going to click on the white because that's the part I want to get rid of. And it's not doing a very good job with that selection. But if you recall, the last time I used the Magic Wand tool, the tolerance was set to its lowest level of 1. So I'm going to return it to the default level of 32 and press Enter to lock in that change. Zoom back out and try clicking again. And the first time I click, it deselects what had been previously selected, but the next time I click, I get a new selection and it's doing a much better job. I'm going to press delete and it didn't select everything, but that's okay because I just click on what didn't get selected yet and press delete and it's gone too. And now I can press command D to deselect that active selection and I'm ready to grab my move tool and scale this because right now this is taking up way too much visual real estate in my composition. I need room for a lot more elements. So I'm going to press Command-T to transform. I'm going to make sure I'm holding my shift key, click and drag on a corner, and scale it down. I'm going to reposition it just to see how it looks where I plan on using it. And it could be just a smidge bigger. And then I press Enter to lock in that change. Before I continue, I'm going to take a moment to go to the Layer Palette, double click where it says Layer 1. It might say something different on yours, but you know it's the newest layer that you added, and call it X-Wing. And you'll notice that this little thumbnail preview is so tiny, I can't really tell what that is. So that's where this naming convention, this habit, really comes in handy. It will make it much easier for me to find what I want later on if I give things descriptive names. So right now I've got this X-Wing fighter in my scene, but it really doesn't look very dynamic. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little special effect to give it the appearance of movement. And the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to click on my Layers tab here. And like anything else with a tab in Photoshop, I can click and reposition things. And I'm going to move it uh, a little closer. And I'm also going to expand this Layers window so I can see all of my layers. To create this special effect, we're going to start by creating a copy of the X-Wing. And I think the easiest way to do that is to simply click on the X-Wing layer, and we're going to drag and drop it on top of the new layer button at the bottom of the layer palette. And now we have a copy. Whenever you make a copy of a layer like this, it always places that copy exactly on top of the original. So if I click and drag, I'm clicking and dragging and moving away that copy, and you can you can see that there are actually two X-Wing fighters in my scene now. For the special effect we're going to create, it's going to be a lot handier if it's already lined up with the original. So I'm going to press Command-Z to go back in time one step. And now they're both perfectly aligned again. Our next stop is going to be to the Filter menu. And we're going to go into the Blurs, and we're going to select Motion Blur so that you can see the effect of this filter on an element in your composition and see it in context with the rest of the things you want to make sure that you enable that little preview option and now as I make changes I can actually see it appear on the screen and when we're working with blurs there's two things we want to keep an eye on and the first is distance now it's a little misleading because in this context the distance makes it blurrier and more stretched out and if I take this all the way to the end, or close to it, you can see that if it's too blurry, it pretty much disappears. So you don't want to forget that this distance value has a big effect on how that filter appears. So I'm going to blur it out about that much. The other thing you have to pay attention to with a motion blur is the direction of the blur. What we want is we want our blur direction to line up with the direction that this object is traveling in. If I don't have it lined up correctly, it's just going to look strange. It's going to look like this thing is flying off to the side instead of flying along the, the trajectory implied by the angle. 
So you can click and drag and make that adjustment using this little interface element. But sometimes it's hard to be as accurate as you would like with just clicking and dragging. So what you can do is position your cursor in this field where there's that numerical value. And then you can use your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to adjust the angle. And once you're happy with the direction of the angle, you're happy with the distance value, you can click OK. So now we have the blur applied. But if we take a look at where that blur is relative to this little ship, it doesn't make sense that it would be blurry behind and in front. That blur is sort of where that object, or in this case, the X-Wing fighter, has traveled. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and we're going to reposition it so that we don't see that blur extending in front of the X-Wing. It just sort of follows behind. As you're looking at your file, you might feel that the blur looks a little too heavy, a little too extreme. We are going to use our layer opacity to mute that effect. Before when we adjusted the opacity, we used the slider to click and drag and released intermittently and sort of evaluated where we wanted to position it. We now know that we can click in these areas that contain numerical information and use our up and down arrow keys to make adjustments as well. Now if I just am pressing up and down arrow keys, you'll notice that it's moving at 1% at a time. If I want to make faster jumps, I can hold my shift key and now it jumps up in 10% increments. So it makes it a very efficient way of getting exactly the effect that you want. I'm going to press enter once I've changed. I'm going to zoom back out so I can see my whole composition, move my layers palette a little bit out of the way. So one X-Wing fighter in the scene looks pretty cool, but I think it would be more interesting if there was a few more. And because we've already done all the editing to the first X-Wing, we've added that blur effect. We don't want to re have to redo that. So what we're going to do is we're going to first, in our Layers palette, we're going to select the X-Wing and the X-Wing copy. And we can do that by holding the Shift key. We can select more than one layer at a time. And then we're going to go to this little Options area in the Layers palette. And we are going to ask for a new group from Layers. And that means the layers that are selected. I'm going to give it a logical name, so X-Wing works, and click OK. And now what I have in my layers palette is this little folder. But if I click on this little arrow, I can see that it contains those two layers. What's nice about working with a layer group like this is now that I want to make a copy of this X-Wing with a blur effect, I don't have to copy individual layers and then position them relative to one another I can just copy the layer group. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the layer group and dragging it down and on top of the new layer button. And now I've got a copy that copies exactly on top of the original. So I don't see that until I click and drag and move it away. And I can transform this group. So instead of having to transform the blur and the fighter separately, they all go along for the ride at the same time. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to press enter to lock in that transformation. And I'm going to make one more copy. Scroll over a little bit. Move this over here and transform this as well. And press enter. Another thing I can do when I'm in transform mode is if I allow the mouse to hover just outside of one of those corner handles, you'll notice the arrow changes into this little bendy arrow. And that means that I can click and drag and actually rotate that image. And I press Enter. And I might do that over here as well. Bendy arrow, click, drag, press Enter. Reposition is required. And zoom back out. 